everybody. <laughs> I'm a musician. <laughs> I'm a bloody rock god. <laughs> Look what I can do. Hey! Damn it. <laughs> Fun with loop pedals! Yay! Yay! I am Richie Castellano. Welcome to Band Geek. Today joining me is my co-host Jarrett Pressman. Hello! We are here to talk about loopers and red guitars. No, we're here to talk about the Queen movie, Bohemian Rhapsody, which we just saw yesterday. Yes. Um, okay, so let's get right into it. Um, let's do an overall review, like an overall impression, spoiler free, before we go into the spoiler. Part of it. Spoiler? Are there really spoilers? Well, the spo- well, every freaking trailer is a spoiler for this movie. No. And <laughs> Isn't the history of Queen a spoiler? Yeah, you know, for this like movie? every here's the problem, like because everybody knows I love Queen, like every single person I talked to gave me a piece of the movie, like spoiled something. Every single person. I talked oh really? To. <laughs> hey, did you hear about the thing? I'm like, no, I didn't. Now I did. <laughs> did so, you hear he was gay? I didn't. <laughs> No, but it was like everybody I spoke to spoiled at least <laughs> one part of this movie. It, it was, uh, but you know, it's being in the music community, everybody talks about it. Sure. But anyway, so really quickly, without going into details, what we, what did you think of the movie? Um, I was upset. I thought it was about the Bahamas. I thought it was Bahamian oh. Rhapsody. Um, no, man, I dug it. I, I I dug it on the same scale as I I like most most of the music band like the the musician based movies that I like. Even the fake ones, like that thing you do, or right. uh, still crazy, or something like that, it's just up there on par at that level. Like super enjoyable. Of course, you want to sing along with the music, and I, I, I enjoyed it. That's what I. We've talked about this before. That's what I go to the movies for. Right. Got my money's worth. Totally paid to see it. Probably watch it again. I I, uh, I agree. I freaking loved it. I thought it was phenomenal. <laughs> um, I you know obviously there were some inaccuracies, but it didn't affect my enjoyment of the movie because like being a queen fan like okay i know that it's not 100 percent accurate right. but it didn't stop it from being a fun movie and also a really moving movie and like an emotional movie like uh, i was you know i was in, in a row with a bunch of different people as you know from different <laughs> walks of life i just i thought it was funny too because you were like it was emotional because at one point you looked at me you were like you're not crying i'm not crying you're crying yeah. <laughs> But you know, <laughs> this is this is not this is not like really everybody's saying it's a sanitized movie. Like they kind of go there, yeah, and and they go there enough to make it watchable by a lot of people, which I think is the goal here. Is that a lot of people can watch this movie? You could take your kid to watch this movie, pretty much. Right. And it, it's not like they're they don't they're I don't yeah, know exactly it, what people I don't know what people expect like hard porn pornography yeah there's nothing like that <laughs> but uh, he's gay and we want to see it yeah you know <laughs> we're gonna get into the reviews but um, I thought most of the negative reviews missed the point this is uh, a movie that really honored his legacy and was about the band and the music and. Go see it in the in the theater with great speakers. That's all I'm saying. I didn't know it you'll was feel actually... you'll feel like you're at a concert. I didn't know it was actually an IMAX too. Right. That probably sounds amazing. I, I was expecting from all the reviews that like to not a be to not be about Freddie and to not you know really paint him in the genius light that he that he was. But it I I was really moved by it. You know what I mean? I I thought it was a beautiful movie. They um I mean we can get into it later too. But there I was reading today um. I mean, this movie's been in development for a very long time, yep. or versions of this. Mm -hmm. um, and just before this, there was a, almost a go version yeah. of this um, with uh, with Sasha Baron Cohen right. as as Freddie, um, and they came to sort of disputes over it because the movie he was making the movie more about Freddie and ba and Queen was barely in it, right? Um, and they they wanted something more rounded, so eventually that. You know, project fell apart and it moved to this. But even this movie, and we can get into it later, like also fell apart. It <laughs> follows the same curse as everything we have, else we love with superhero movies. Like, yeah, had and two Star directors, Wars and, and, yeah, yeah. You know, and and change towards the end and reshoots and blah blah blah. Yeah, I mean, like, there's a movie. That, after watching this movie, I was like, wow, what other of my favorite bands can we make awesome, fun movies about? 
And I, I was thinking about that Beatles movie. Did you ever see that Beatles movie, Backbeat? Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. It's a Beatles movie <laughs> with no Beatles music in it. Yep. And it's like about all like the early stuff in, in Hamburg. And it, and, and it was like, it's like, no, that I said, okay, that tried to go there and get into the, all that stuff. And that was a fail. Like really, you, you, you wanted to go to see the Beatles. Right. And you didn't really see that. But with this movie, you wanted to go see Queen and Freddie Mercury like being awesome. And it's really gave you that. Right. And uh, it, it it also gave you sort of um, in not in a cover bandy kind of way, but like a way to experience as close to Queen as you might some people might be able to get to. Mm-hmm. You know, there's the Queen Extravaganza and, right. and other you know, and and uh, when Paul Rogers was touring with Queen and stuff like that. You know, this this sort of brings it into eventually will bring it into your living room. I I just you know I'm being a person who never got to see Freddie Mercury live in concert. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, I went with my aunt and uncle. My aunt and uncle were there at the theater, and my aunt Cheryl saw them in concert with Freddie. Pause for a second. So, Richie and Anne Marie went to the movie theaters. Yes, by, by ourselves. By ourselves. They showed up. I happened. This is Monday, on a Monday afternoon at 5.30 in yeah. the afternoon. They show up. I'm sitting there. And then, five minutes later, Richie's uncle and aunt show up. Um, and then as we're leaving, his father and his brother-in-law show up, and another dude you knew yeah, showed yeah, up. Yeah, JD. It was, none, none of this was, was uh, <laughs> none coordinated. Of it, it was so, it was, but it was amazing that it was just like, wow, 5.30 on Monday is a hot time. But it was almost like the Star Wars movie. It's like, I got to see this right away so people don't tell me everything that goes on in it. Also because true. Every, you know, like, I was in the car with, with somebody, <laughs> and they started reading out loud a review. And it was like giving away plot points. I'm like, I yes, I know the story, but I don't know what's going to happen in the movie. Right. And... You know, whatever. So that being said, everything from this point on is going to be spoiler alert. So if you haven't go see the movie, if you haven't gone. Excuse me. If you, haven't, if you haven't gone to see the movie, go see it immediately. It's mm. fun. If you are going there to to look for the nitty gritty expose on you know Freddie Mercury's life, you're not going to get that. If you want to see a fun movie that's that is filled with your favorite songs. Really painstaking reproductions of or recreations of uh, so of, amazing. of of concert footage, uh, and you want to see a really touching story about someone who dealt with horrible loneliness. This is this is the movie for you. If you want all those things, if you want this, um, you know, to the letter accurate uh, chronological. Uh, uh, expose. Then watch a documentary about yeah, Queen. Yeah, yeah. Go, go, <laughs> go. Read a book on Freddie Mercury because this is not that. This is a this is a celebration. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, that's a good word. And uh, that's that's where I'm standing at this. So I want to talk about just briefly. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but um, a lot of people wanted to know what I think about this movie. Now I'm not associated <laughs> with queen in any way i just like nobody wants to know what i thought of this movie <laughs> no, well, you know, no i know what you mean well because people like every, you know a lot of people were messaging me like oh i was curious to hear what you what you thought now yeah i i'm not really associated with the band but i'll give a little background if you know because at this point um i did that video and it was like seven years ago youtube sensation no not really but um <laughs> but the uh We've talked about it also on older episodes. Too, yeah, but I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna give and, a, and, uh, a brief a yeah. brief rundown of that because I, I also I want to show something. Sure. Um, so my you know my favorite one of my favorite bands. You guys know what I like. I like the Beatles. I like Yes, and I like Queen. If you guys watch Band Geek, you know what I'm into. Um, so I heard on the radio. I heard this guy Mark Martell singing "Somebody to Love" flawlessly. And I almost had to like pull over my car. It was it was in the car, and I said, "Oh, this is this guy entered this competition to see who can sound like Queen." And I said, "Oh, I, I could kind of do that with, right. with the guitar parts." Sure. So I entered, not even knowing or necessarily caring that it was for a cover band. Right. You know, I was just like, "Oh no, we're, we're posting stuff." Of, I like, I'm in. I love doing this. So I uh, I entered, and I actually made it to the semifinals, and I got to fly to L.A. The Queen flew me to L.A. Uh, I got to meet Roger Taylor. I got to meet meet Spike Ed, Spike Edney. I got to meet Jim Beach, uh, and we went to the Foo Fighters studio in L.A. and uh, we auditioned for them, and it was an amazing experience. Uh, I I ended up nothing happened after it. Our friend Brandon Etheridge, mm-hmm. he uh, he ended up getting the keyboard gig, 
And um, two wonderful guitar players, Tristan Novakian and Brian Gresh, got the uh, the guitar chairs in the band. So um, that was sort of like the end of the association with the band. But I was kind of like, ah, crap. You know what I mean? Like, I thought I had a good shot at this. Right. So, um, and I, you know, and what I like to do is I don't like to put negative energy out there. And I'd rather, I'd rather use that to be productive. So instead of like sitting around being like, you know, I said, let me, let me just do something commemorative with this instead of doing something uh, negative and counterproductive. Right. You know, so I just moved into this house and I was still setting up the studio and I, or I'd previously done a split screen video with Jackson 5, I Want You Back, right. and that was a lot of fun, and I realized, okay, I can do this. I have sort of enough video editing chops to do this, and I decided to record all the parts of Bohemian Rhapsody down here. Um, thinking like, oh, this is a cool thing, and some people are going to think it's cool. I wasn't expecting how big it got and how quickly. It's the only video I ever had that went quickly viral. Like it, YouTube, when a video goes viral, they lock the number count. So it's stuck at 300 views. So I put it up and I'm like, 300 views? It's, it's, so it says 301 plus. Really? And it gets stuck there. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Because they, what they're doing is they suspect you of using a bot ah. if a video gets that many hits quickly. Okay. So they have to go in and investigate and adjust with the actual totals. I'm like, man, like, I thought it was better than 300 views. And then I realized, oh, no, no, it's locked. And then when they unlocked it. Like within a month, I had fifty thousand views, which right. for band geek videos takes us several months to get. Yeah, yeah, depending uh, on the song, but yeah. Sure. So that was really cool. I got to be on different news programs. I got to be. Uh, I got to do you know international interviews on the phone, and it also led to work for me. I got to play with uh, Queen symphonies. I got to play. Uh, people would call me, "Hey, can you?" I need someone to to do you know Queen background vocals on this track. Can you do it? Can you play like Brian May on this track? And it sort of opened up this whole world to me that I wasn't really part of. Right. So um, you know I don't do so much of it, especially since I didn't want to become like Bohemian Rhapsody guy. Right. And uh, also that song is ridiculously hard to sing. And and also that's almost eight years ago. My voice has changed a little bit. Sure. Uh, you know th those high notes, those high B flats. They kind of kill me. So um, I kind of just started doing different things and doing this. Right. And when we do some Queen songs on here, we've done, what have we done? Let's put, and we'll put links uh, over there, over over Jared's head. Or, or is it going to be over my head? No, Jared's head. Uh, we, we've done. Uh, uh, so we did Don't Stop Me Now. Don't Stop, we did Don't Stop Me Now with Brandon Etheridge. And Brandon Etheridge is the keyboard player, uh, or was the keyboard player in the Queen Extravaganza. Yeah. Um, we did under uh, pressure. We did under pressure. And we did under pressure with uh, John Michelli and Danny Miranda, who were both. Danny was actually in Queen mm -hmm. uh, before being in Queen. He and John played in the We Will Rock You musical in Vegas. Also true. And uh, what else did we do? Um, you have yours, obviously, Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, uh, I, well, I, oh, I do Stone Cold Crazy on the live stream. Um, I believe we did. We did Killer Queen. Oh right, live. we did Killer Queen live. We, that was with uh, at the Village Underground, right, for our hundredth uh, episode. episode. Yeah. Um, I want to say that's it. We're we're gonna try to get another one together to commemorate this movie. Yeah. Uh, I'm not making any promises yet because I know better than to promise we'll be able to pull off a Queen song. So we're going to try it first, and then if it's good, it'll be a link will be at the end of this video to if, that video. If not, it'll be a link to something else. To something else. <laughs> exactly. Um, oh, yeah, we also did Bohemian Rhapsody on uh, the first live show we did. Yeah, Bang Geek episode 50. Right, right, right. Um, uh, if you take a look uh, uh, back at our Throwback Thursday from this week, that'll be the video oh, that, cool. that was up. Very cool. Um but uh, my story with the with that audition process is I thought I could also sing like Freddie. Um, and so I tried to create an audition tape and my internet went down and then I gave up and went to sleep. Did you really? No. <laughs> you know what? I was really bummed that Amory didn't audition because she thought it was just a guy thing. But then they hired a girl to sing. Sure. And, you know, Amory is oh, yeah, a much, much better singer than, than I am. But I do want to share one thing from this because it was one really wonderful thing that happened from this whole experience. Uh, let me go to the... Uh... How do I do this? Oh, screen cap, right. So um, this is from about 2012, I think, or 2011. What, what does it say? Oh, yeah, uh, 2012. Right. And um, January 26, 2012, and someone said, go. someone called me and says, 
have you seen Brian May's website? I said, no. So I, how do I do this? So I went to it, and then if you see over here, it says Split Screen Bohemian Rhapsody. See it? Uh huh. And then when I clicked on it, I said, then when I clicked on it, <laughs> it took me to this, and Brian May posted this. Check this out. There's an enormous amount of work this guy has put into this video. And uh, no. thanks to Phil Holborn. Who, and Phil, if I'm, if I'm thinking of the same Phil, he's a phenomenal guitar player, too. Um, I, if, if I'm thinking of the same Phil, I think when I first saw We Will Rock You in London, mm -hmm. he was the guitar player, um, which was really cool. But I, I remember this, you know, this brought tears to my eyes when I saw that, you know, Brian May gave me props on his website. Right. And the cool thing about uh, the We Will Rock You musical that I saw is Phil came out. And I think it was Phil. If it's if I'm if I got the wrong person, I apologize. But he came out and did the whole. He came out and, and they they let the guitar player come out on stage for that. Right. Did you see that musical? No, I, I saw it. Um. Uh, uh. You saw it in London, right? Yeah. I saw it in Vegas. Ah. Okay. Um. I saw it in Vegas when it was kind of petering out, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But it's still I I still dig it. Um, and I'm a musical theater nerd and as I really don't like jukebox musicals yeah. and like rock musicals that borrow, you know, like that use existing music, but I'm totally fine with that one because uh, they created a whole story. Right. It was like almost like a, like a cyberpunk. It was a cyberpunk sci space science opera, fiction sort yeah. of thing. Um, this, however, I think is a much better effort than We Will Rock You. <laughs> yeah. Uh, even though I enjoy, I, we enjoyed We Will, we Will Rock You. Sure. Um, and they had a good band. Also, Neil Murray was on bass in London. Neil Murray's a phenomenal bass player. And at the time, too, like, it was a Queen experience. So it was like, you never saw a Queen? Like, here you go. Like, right, here's, right. here's a stadium experience for you. So, yeah, that's... So just for some context, that's why I was getting a lot of questions about this. I'm not associated with the band in any way. I just had a little brush with them. And I... And I the, the Bohemian Rhapsody video really propelled me into the YouTube thing. And that's why I'm here right now is because of that and because of my love for that song. So I was sort of like afraid to go see this movie because I'm like, eh, you know, I've heard so many bad things about it. Like you said, right. with the direct with Brian Singer getting kicked off. I'm not a Brian Singer fan. I'll be honest. The first X-Men movie? No. Superman Returns. At Pupil? What? Apt Pupil? I don't know that, that movie. Oh, that's with Ian McKellen where he's Superman a Returns. Nazi. Yeah. Superman Returns. That's all, that's all you need to know. Sure. All right. Um, well, you you could have just said X Men two like, or three <laughs> or three. No, um, wasn't that wasn't that Brett Ratner? Um, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, yes, you're you're right. It was like Brian Singer, really. He's mm -hmm. he's doing the Queen biopic, um, but he I, uh, I if I'm not mistaken, he only got let go like two or three weeks before filming wrapped. Um, so it didn't re I I I mean, him being ousted didn't really change too much, I guess. I thought the style of the movie was awesome. All the cuts. Now, okay, there, there's here's the historical inaccuracies people are talking about. If I'm correct, like they're playing um, "Keep Yourself Alive" at their very first gig. Right. You know, it's like, eh. and I always heard a story that Queen like rehearsed for like months before anybody heard them. Uh, yeah, that, I read that. This, I think I read that this morning too, actually. So you're gonna hear songs out of order, uh, you know, in weird. Like, okay, you know, they obviously didn't have this song recorded by this point. I'm a big fan of this band. Who gives a crap? Okay? Uh, do you give, did you give a crap about that? No. Um, and I liked that they didn't do it in sort of the way that it could be like in a campy style where it was like, Hey, get off the stage, you queen. And it's like, queen, I'll lock the sound of that. Like, <laughs> like it's, you I'll know, lock the sound of that one. Because all of a sudden, Freddie Mercury's a cockney boot black. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, I lock the sound of that one. Um, I like that song. May I have another? <laughs> yeah. I, or it's like if they were doing like a Beatles movie, like, hey, guys, get on the stage, beat it. Like, it, <laughs> they didn't, like, you know, it could have been very hacky like that. But, you know, there was little pieces of that, but it didn't bother me. Like, the thing with the microphone, like, it was like, oh, he took half the microphone standoff. Or is that a real thing? I read his Wikipedia <laughs> last night. It's a real thing. Really? He said um, he, it was a broken mic stand at a gig, and he just went with it. And then he kept it. And that was the thing. All right, well, that's... Fair play to me. I was wrong. I mean, <laughs> I think, like, just from being a fan and watching Brian May interviews for, you know, 20 years at this point, mm -hmm. um, it was funny, not funny, but it was like, funny is the wrong word, it was, it was really 
it was really interesting, or or just wild, I should say, to see all the stories he described throughout those interviews, mm. like acted out. Sure, he was seeing reenactments of like every Brian May interview I've ever seen. Now, yes, the movie is told through it, it's, and maybe some people say sanitized through the prism of Brian May and Roger Taylor's memory and their legacy. So. It does. It is complimentary to them, but like, who? It, it did. I to me like okay, fine. You know what I mean? I'm a fan of the band. Right. I like. I don't. I didn't go to that movie to see that to see them being crapped on. You know, like I. I'm. I'm. I want to. I want to be. I want to be, be happy about it. You know what I mean? I want to be entertained. Right. Spoiler alert: the guy who plays Brian May really looks like Brian May. Yeah, it's scary. It's really cr- like the whole. I was like, oh, let's crap. start casting first. Now the. Brian May casting was almost better than the Rami Malek <laughs> casting. Hey, what? That's the whole time I'm sitting there thinking the same thing. Now, because like Rami Malek is good, but you can tell he's got like a the prosthetic. Yeah, so they um, gave him an extra prosthetic, even though his fa- he has very similar facial features to right Freddie Mercury. Um, but they gave yeah he gave him a prosthetic to give him like the extra push. What the hell is that? Oh, anyway, um, so he. Everybody's saying Oscar. Like I'm hearing a lot of people say Oscar, Oscar, really? Oscar. Wow. I I think he I think he was wonderful, and not only that he the nuances of the the accent, the fact that there was like a hint of an Indian accent in right. there, a hint yeah. that came out sometimes. And then I went back and I'm like, Fred doesn't talk like that. And then I went back and watched Freddie Mercury interviews last night. And I'm like, oh, he does talk like that. Like someone did their homework. Right. But the guy Gwilym Lee, who did, is that his name? Uh, the uh, who played Roger Taylor? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, he did his homework. Like that oh, dude, uh, not not right. Uh, Brian May. Sorry. Brian May. Yeah, that um, that dude talks like Brian May, looks like Brian May, and not only that, he mimed all the guitar stuff. Great. Yeah. Like, did you ever see that movie uh, with Sean Penn, Sweet and Lowdown? Mm. It's a Woody Allen movie uh-uh. about the second best guitar player in the world <laughs> okay. behind Django Reinhardt. It's in that like era, mm. and like, you know, when they're doing like. And they're like, they're, the guys do like, right, it, it looks bad and you can tell look, it looks And bad. the camera like, like zooms in on his hands <laughs> like, what are you thinking? Anybody who, you know, it, it looks terrible. Right. But um, this movie, like, they were great. Every instrumentalist, uh, especially the piano stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, there's one scene, which is also one of those scenes that uh, Brian May talked about in an interview, said in Freddie's flat. That's what they call it in England. Ah. The apartment. Um, they... <laughs> oh, everything makes so much more sense it now. It does. I was like, why is everything so... Fu-? I felt like Back to the Future. Yeah. Like, why is everything so heavy in the future? Um, yeah, well, why do they keep saying Freddy's flat? <laughs> He's not flat. He's perfectly in, in tune. Yeah. Uh, no, but they said he had the bed right uh, right up to the piano. Yeah. So he used to play like this. And I thought he was actually playing that. Yeah. It, it, I just... So well done. So much care taken in this movie. Um, I think he... I think... He, He's the kind of actor that took extra, like, which is why he would be cast too. But like, he took extra care to make sure he took extra care. Right. Because he did his he did his homework. Because th- this is the first one. It's not like other people have portrayed this before. Right. Like, right. He's it. And on the other end of that, like, okay, so you have Freddie Mercury, who's everybody knows what Freddie Mercury looks like and sounds like. Mm-hmm. Um, you have Brian May, which is not as well known. But the guy took the care to really do it. And then you have the Roger Taylor actor, who was very good, but looked and sounded nothing like Roger Taylor. <laughs> Correct. Now, Roger Taylor has a very high-pitched voice, you know, and it's... It, the guy, like, the guy I was registered was here the whole movie, you right, know? Right, right, right. For democracy! <laughs> he might as well, you know... He's, yeah. Hello there. Hello there. He, he might as well have been being... Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi <laughs> movie, but, uh, uh, and so... That, I thought that was a little weird. I mean, he he was great, and he had he, he was like fiery enough to be that character. Right. You know what I mean? But uh, it was sort of like when the Star Trek reboot came out, mm. and you're like, oh my god! Like Zachary Quinto looks exactly like uh, Spock, and and Carl Urban sounds just like Bones. And it's like, hey, why is uh, Harold not? Why doesn't he sound like uh, you know George Takei? Right. He's not yeah. even trying. Yeah. It's like so. Like, where is the line drawn where it's like, okay, you two guys. Because you're important. Everybody knows what you sound like. Right. You have to be spot on. The rest, eh. So that was my only like nitpicky criticism about sure. that. Is, right. is like that the, out of the four leads, you know, two of them were spot on. 
What the hell is she doing up there? She's in the fracking ship, Bill. Yeah. My, my wife is watching Battlestar Galactic upstairs. Um, but yeah, you're right. What, did, what about uh, what about the guy who played John Deacon? Uh, Amory said he's the kid from Jurassic Park. Really? Yeah. Oh god, I gotta go look now. Oh, that's gonna blow my mind. Hey, look it up. Grab your phone. Look it up right now. Yeah, that's on I can floor. look it up on here on the on the computer. What? You can touch the computer. You can touch the computer. So let's see. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. This is you get to watch us look at the internet, and for those of you listening, you get to listen to us watch the internet. Okay, hold on. let's, let's uh, go to screen cap. So John Deacon, Joe Mazzello, Ben Hardy. No, not uh, not Roger Taylor. Deacon. Oh, Deacon. Whoops. Is that what I hit? No, you hit uh, oh, oh, Roger whoops. Taylor. Joe Mazzello. Here. Joe Mazzello. Here we go. Let's see. Nope. Jurassic oh, Park. He's Jim! Oh, my God. That's so crazy. <laughs> oh, God. Now I'm going to go watch this movie again. Shh, I knew he looked familiar. So I'm, The entire time I'm placing him, and he looked like he was somebody out of the Karate Kid, and I couldn't place him. Um, I, I wasn't seeing the resemblance until they gave him, like, the Brillo pad head. Yeah. I was like, oh, hey, that looks pretty good. And he was funny in the movie. Like, he had a lot of zingers, I thought. Yeah. He, um, and I also read this morning, too, that um, we're jumping, but when they go and start recording A Night at the Opera, like, that's the, that is where they recorded A Night at the Opera. Oh, really? That, like, that, that farm? That farm out there. Um, and they said that two of John Deacon's, like, toms, like, they brought them in, whatever. Oh, Roger so, Taylor? Uh... Um, the drum? Yeah, sorry. Oh, Roger Taylor. Uh, Roger, Ta- they they brought in two Roger Taylor's um, uh, toms, and uh, like he actually got to, like the actor got to play on those, so he yeah. was like that's it was like spooky, <laughs> like for him because he was actually playing on Roger Taylor's uh, drum set or part of his drum set. Yeah, I mean, the, a lot of the criticisms were talking about how there's a lot of, I guess, music biopic uh, tropes in there, like, almost, like, Dewey Cox-ish. Right, but again, that's the whole thing. Like, get off the stage, you're queen. Like, it could have been, like... No, but it's, like, it's like, like he's sitting going, love of my, love, love of... It's, like, obviously he didn't write the song like that. Right. Um, it, but they're, like, they're, they're dramatizing it, folks. It's... It's it's a mo- it's still a movie. It's a biopic because it's the... It's called a biopic because of the subject matter that it's based on, not the way that it's presented. If that makes sense. So let's, I, I think a fun thing to do, oh, actually before we go, we should take care of some business. Uh, if you want to support the Band Geeks, uh, you can use our tip jar at richiecastellano.com slash tip jar. And uh, that helps us keep making videos for you guys. And it uh, just takes you to a PayPal form uh, from our partner site, Streamlabs. We also have merch. Uh, that's at, uh, oh wait, I'm sorry, I skipped ahead. Go to our, use our Amazon link, crap. Use our Amazon link. That's at uh, riotcast.com slash bandgeek. And there's an Amazon banner at the top of the page. And uh, you just do your normal shopping. And then when you check out, a small percentage of your purchase goes supporting our show. And doesn't cost you anything extra. And we have merch now. Bandgeek.merchtable.com. We have a bunch of stuff uh, for men and ladies. Men and ladies. Hats, shirts, cups. You name it. Cups? <laughs> we have cups now. Oh, mugs. <laughs> oh, mugs. I was thinking like like sports sports cups. That's a thing, right? Yeah, we have a cup with uh, Jared's <laughs> face on your on your junk. Just like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so um, uh, let's... I want to talk about some of the uh, reviews. Um, first of all, I have a, uh, a friend of mine who I really respect, who is insistent on reading me reviews to movies that I'm looking forward to seeing, especially if the reviews aren't favorable. So I've gotten very wary of reviews uh, because, like, there are movies that are panned, for example, Batman v Superman, that I think is really good, and the reviews made everybody sort of say, oh, yeah, see, it sucks, you know, because it's like... I know a lot of people don't like that movie, but that's just an example that, like, the reviews... Oh, this is the greatest movie, uh, this is the crappiest movie ever, and I thought it was great. And on the other hand, you have movies like The Last Jedi, which all the critics will say, oh, this is the most phenomenal movie uh, in the Star Wars saga, and, and all the fans hate it. So I'm not listening to them anymore. Whenever somebody says, like, oh, I saw Bohemian Rhapsody last night, and mm-hmm. somebody's like, I heard that was really bad. Really? Who, who'd who you hear it from? Right. Who told you that? Who? I want to know. Um, because I actually had that conversation with a friend of mine last night. 
Um, I posted on on Facebook. I said, "Go see Bohemian Rhapsody." Um, and a friend and a dude that I know said, you know, oh, I heard it really wasn't good. I said, if you heard that information from somebody who didn't actually see the film and you like Queen, go watch it. Right. If you like Queen and you want to have a good time, you want to be be Enter- moved and entertained. Yeah. If you want to like laugh, cry, sing, dance in your seat, you know, <laughs> that that's this is the movie. But let's. Thirty seconds into the movie, we got our price of admission. Yeah, because they. Did- I don't want to say it because Lane at the store said, "Oh, you hear what they did with the?" And I'm like, "No, that would been really that would have been a really nice surprise for oh. me." But yeah, um, show up early enough to see from the very beginning. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, because I'm not. Gonna, I, even though we get this spoiler, no, no, you're right. I'm, I'm glad you stopped me. Yeah. So um, it's just one of those little like subtle things where if you're a Queen fan, you're like, "Yeah, of course, that makes sense." So let's see the so the green blobs are the bad ones. Um, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> These are like Nickelodeon thing. Oh, because yes, it's a splat. This is Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. So this is my, probably my least favorite website on the internet. And it has so much sway. It really does and it, it really shouldn't. But anyway, uh, let's look at Aaron Keene over here from Salon.com. Where? Ideally, a film like this would attempt to add to or to contextualize a legacy. Instead, Behemoth Rhapsody tries to sanctify it, pack it in bubble wrap, to protect it from causing or being caught in any friction. So, okay. Okay. <laughs> this is my theory on, on, on this, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm going to get a little political. A little. I know we have a rule against it on the show. <laughs> I think this movie is... Ever since the Senate. <laughs> I, think, I think because this movie is about a gay man mm-hmm. who died from AIDS, right... Some critics really see this as a platform to to really dive into this sort of thing. Sure. Whereas this movie was sort of, it was part of it, but it, it wasn't the whole movie. You know what I mean? Like the music was the the, the music was a character in the movie. Sure. You know. Um, so, at the risk of of hurting any butts, um, <laughs> I don't think this movie is woke enough for some people. I, just, I, I hate that term, but I, I, I get where you're coming from, mm-hmm. and I get where they're coming from, because this is like, it's it's just a way to, to everything, I, honestly, most stuff, and I spend a lot of time on the internet, most stuff is clickbait. Yeah. Which is why it's like, oh, I want to see that movie, and then you click on this, and then you go down a rabbit hole, and you read all these reviews, and then it just, it sways your opinion. Right. But then it's also the same thing when like television commercials used to be like the number one movie in the country, and it was like, is there any? Is it ever not the number one movie in the country? Well, despite all the critics uh, poo pooing this movie, this has a uh, had a very impressive debut. Yeah, fifty million, which is great for a movie for a biopic, absolutely. Yep. So um, that's that's good. I'm glad that the fans are speaking here, and the <laughs> fans are. Are voting with their wallets instead of listening to some you know blowhards talk about how the movie doesn't uh, fit whatever narrative they want. Right. Um, Freddie Mercury deserves better. Okay. Um, <laughs> what a way to take a poop on his grave. Some, like that's what that review sounds like. To yeah. Me. Not the movie. I'm just saying. Like he deserves better. Yeah. That, that's basically like the shit sandwich review. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Two. Where? Where? Where do they print where, that? You can't print you that. Can't print that. But the the funny thing about that is where it says Freddie Mercury deserves better. Yet, um, uh, this like this is the version that's that's Brian May and Roger Taylor like executive produced. Like they they were behind. I'm not saying 100 percent like every artistic decision, but they were like yeah, well. I think they wanted to be involved so that they had that the input was in the right. Room. But I think part of people's problems was that it 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 made it appear like Freddie was the problem all the time. Sure. Um, and that you know he had the the substance abuse problems and he was the one who was being promiscuous and he was the one that tried to break up the band and then he came crawling back to them and that. That might have rubbed people the wrong way. Okay. Um, but, like, Freddie did make two solo albums, you know, and the rest of the band, did, like, I mean, he did it while the band was still working. Right. Um, but, to me, okay, if you're going to be mad at that, fine. Like, it didn't bother me. It really didn't. Um, I mean, 
I don't know. I don't. I wasn't there. Right. I, I wasn't in. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's I, wasn't I don't in, know if they're telling me the yeah. truth or not. I wasn't in Jim Beach's office in uh, 1984, or whatever it was. Right. You know, like I wasn't there. So we have the accounts of three people that were there who were involved in making this movie. Right. You know, um, Jim Beach has a credit on it, and um, Brian May and Roger Taylor have a credit on, credits on this movie. So um, they were there. So we have their accounts. And the movie, yeah, it's their movie. They're the producers. When you're the producer of the movie, that's it's your movie. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, the director is in charge of the artistic vision, but if you're the producer, you are you have a big say over it. Spoiler alert. Wasn't Freddy. It was Littlefinger. Yeah. Littlefinger did it. <laughs> Freddy. Freddy. That was really good. <laughs> Freddy, I think that you should take a deal with CBS Records. <laughs> I'd be lying if I didn't try that in the shower this morning. That's really good. That's, I like that. That's a, there's a there's a YouTube video floating around where a guy does like all different Game of Thrones. I, I love that video. But it just you never realize that every single time Littlefinger speaks, he's like Sansa. I just want to explain myself to you. That it's just an instant, it, you never notice. So that actor somebody. Littlefinger is in the movie. If, if you didn't know, and Mike Myers. Yep. Cameo. That was spoiled for me. That, oh really? Yes. I had no idea. I'm looking at him going like, why do I know that guy's face? It's, you know why? It's because you're not surrounded by horrible people that want to remove, surgically remove the joy from your life. I'm a horrible people. Yeah, see, you weren't there to do it to yourself. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. I was just too busy. Um, I'm sorry. Like, I was explaining this to Andrea. I was like, oh, man, I really wish I, I would have like not known about this stuff. And first of all, the, the, the trailers, they gave away a lot of the movie. A lot. Um, but my... my feeling about spoilers is that you are robbing someone of a moment of their life. You're stealing a moment of their life of like genuine uh, like wonderment and surprise. Yeah. That's my feeling on it. That's why, you know, I have to go if a movie, if there's a movie come out that I really care about, I have to go see it right away because I know everybody's going to say, hey, you know that scene where Wonder Woman uh, she whips her boobs out? I'm like, what? What? Yeah. What? Where? <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we went to see Solo like four days later because we didn't care. Didn't care. <laughs> uh, I know how the Kessel Run turns out. He yeah. win wins it. He oh. wins it. Or yep, he wins it in, lo- in less oh. than it takes to do it oh. normally. I know that's only like three episodes ago that we did that, but <laughs> I I'm well, I'm wiping that from my mind. Solo. I, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't buy. I didn't the, buy it either. <laughs> I didn't buy the Blu-ray. I'm pretending it never happened. That's what I'm doing. Mm, interesting. Yep. And I'm I'm happier for it. Uh, yeah, I uh, I didn't buy it either. Uh, do yourself a favor. Uh, watch a Quiet Place instead. It's a much better movie. Is it? Yes. Or watch this I movie. Bought that. Or watch Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, you know what? Watch Spider Man Homecoming again. Watch the Blu-rays with all the deleted Captain America video features. Oh, I've been watching uh, Avengers: Infinity War over and over again. Mm-hmm. I love that movie. Wow. Yeah, that that's almost converting me. This is a it's it's a very I've known him for you know thirty years already, and and this. Uh, that's a very strong statement from you. Um, but yeah, so spoiler alert. I mean, we know we said it before, but Mike Myers. Yeah. Do you remember when Do you remember when it was like, oh, all he's doing is comedy. And then it was like that time, like in the 90s, early 2000s, where a lot of people tried to do, like comedians tried to do serious stuff. And then they put him as the creepy club owner in Studio 54. Yeah, as uh, Steve. Uh, he, I forget what his name is, but he, yeah. Steve Rebel. Oh, oh yeah, I think you're close. Something like that. The internet um, will tell us, but yeah, it was it was that kind of thing where I was like, oh, look at that, Mike Myers not being a uh, Mike, way to way to bring it around, and they did a little cheesy thing, but I totally appreciated it. He was uh, oh, it was a cameo. He was a record executive mm-hmm. that basically you know well, whatever. He's a record executive that was not exactly on board with their more uh, operatic stuff, right? But the uh, but the the like. Kids will never be uh, blasting this in their cars and, yeah, and yeah. banging their heads along with it. I'm like, because it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a, that was a meta joke. And a night I want to go look at some of these, sunder. some more of these miserable bastards. I mean, these are reviews. So um, here we go. The problem with all this uh, from real views, which I don't even know what that is. Uh, the problem with all this meticulous recreation is that in the end, it rings hollow. Uh, I don't know. I was kind of. I, I was very misty during this movie. Um, yeah, it, it was definitely uh, teary parts. Yeah. Um, taken on its taken strictly on its from CNN. Taken strictly on its terms, <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody is a credible exercise in nostalgia, if not as an especially inspired one. Well, yeah, like I said, it goes through a lot of the um, music biopic uh, tropes. Sure, but but it's a, it's a music biopic. That's exactly it's uh, how do you, it. 
but I feel like it again. It does it in a way where it wasn't like super cheese. There were parts where the music was the music, like in the same way it would be in like you know a Cameron Crowe film or something like that, or like where just like some groovy song, like groovy track from the seventies or the eighties, like just brings you know the scene together. But then there was also you know performing parts of it too. The whole section where um, Mary was like, I like. I can't be with you anymore and, and that yeah. kind of stuff and the background was when the crowd was singing Love of My Life yeah. back to him Yeah, I was like this, it was perfect oh yeah because it was just like lightly in the background and it, it just you know it wasn't like some weird awful piano like version of it like from a composer it was just like you know what I mean like it it, it fit the situation the, the movie aside from being about I, I think the problem maybe that people might have with this is that Freddie's loneliness and like despair was a subplot, and the songs were the the main story, and the career of the band was the main story. <laughs> I leaned over to you and I was like, "I'm like Freddie. I have cats too." <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Jared in the middle of the movie, he he leans over to me and goes, "I think Freddie has toxoplasmosis <laughs> like me." <laughs> Richie tells me that I have toxoplasmosis because I had two. I have one now. I had two cats. And he thinks one of his cats hung himself. No, <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. I'm sorry. I was. I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't resist that. Um, oh God, Mr. Boots. <laughs> um. <laughs> but it was. It was a. Uh, it was more of a side story. But I'm gonna make. Uh, I. I can't help it. I'm a Star Wars fan. I wear. I wear it on my sleeve. So what we got was the Force Awakens, of. Queen movies, where it's like a sort of by the numbers, but really great feeling movie. Like you love it. It's like, oh yes, it's awesome. You have a great time watching it. And what the critics wanted was the Last Jedi of of Queen movies, <laughs> wow. where it's just like, let's subvert everyone's expectations. Let's instead of having a fun movie where everybody's like, this is awesome, and they have a few tear jerky moments, they're like, let's talk about how how miserable he was the whole time. That sounds like a great movie, right? You know, it's like, all right. Uh, that's what that's what I think is going on here, and that's and again I think you're seeing more of a divide between fans and critics over this sort of thing. It's the critics are like, like no, we, it has to. We can't. You can't go in seeing what you expect. Right. We have to subvert those expectations. No, that's not artful for for you to just go and get what you paid for. No, you have to be taken down a path you didn't know you were getting. Right. Right. Or or ground has to be broken here. But and then the fans are like I have a night off I want to go see a movie that I like you know about a band that makes songs that I like right. and that's what it was and but it wasn't strictly that it, it I don't think it was as sanitized as they're making you think it is no it's it, because they wanted they wanted the it's weird as much as they want the appeal of a mass market movie so that it makes money um and and uh you know, basically, it makes money. Movies are made to make money. They're right. not made to make audiences enjoy them anymore. I feel like, for the most part, um, which is why so few and far between on these movie reviews, where it's just like, yeah, I like it. I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna watch it again. Or no, that was duty. Like I'm gonna, I, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I don't, I don't want to watch it ever again. Um, but for the most part, it's you know, movies are always intended to make money. So they want this like broad audience to enjoy this movie but then the critics are like they didn't make him gay enough you know like and and they didn't talk about how crazy he was well uh, to 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 speak to what you're talking about right now here's uh peter travers from the rolling stone magazine he uh he has uh he said basically exactly what you're saying. Oh, well, there you uh, go. In, in struggle to make a saleable, is it a saleable? Is that, how you say that? Saleable. In struggle to make a saleable PG-13 movie out of an R-rated rock life, this Queen biopic stumbles. But there's only praise to heap on Rami Malek, whose tour de force performance as Freddie Mercury will definitely rock you. Um, it's pretty much perfectly said. I don't think I it stumbles as much. Uh, I think I think the only stumbling block in this movie is that it it sort of goes the walk hard route. I think it's almost like you can take out the Dewey Cox story and put in Queen. And especially in the way it's edited and how they move through the decades and whatnot. I or, actually or liked years. that they jumped. I liked it too. Yeah. I, I liked I had no problem with that, but I think that was the problem with it, is that it was sort of made as this like fun, like 
experience like hey we're going to do the time warp right now or whatever and, right. and you're watching the, the credits or the, the titles like fly out of the screen with that sort of like 70s uh font yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know uh I like the let stuff I thought the presentation and the style stylistic direction of it and the mm-hmm. way it was cut was really fun um but maybe that's not what they were hoping for this movie especially uh from a guy who was very private and uh you know everybody's like oh what's he what's he doing behind closed doors i mean right i think in a way this almost respects that saying that like you know he's a very private person and we're giving you a little glimpse into what made him tick and maybe why he was so lonely but uh you know it's 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 how long was the movie an hour and a half two hours it was, two, it was over two hours i think actually it was like 210 or 220 it, it's it didn't feel like it at all you're trying to cram a whole career you know of a band that had like over a dozen hits yeah and that were all important hits like this is a. This it's is even a, more than a dozen because I mean I I think I listened to Queen's greatest like on my phone like I think I listened to Queen's greatest hits one two and three more than I listen to individual albums right. even though I like them. Well yeah, and, and you have hits. there's there's thirty songs on there that are all hits. Right, and then not to mention the masterpiece albums. Yeah. You know which are you know the deep cuts, like yeah for every <laughs> uh, for you know, for every somebody to love yeah there's a profit song, I love or thirty nine you know what I mean. I uh uh first of all the the running joke with um uh, I'm in love with my car was fantastic. It was. Um but um a complete sidebar. I went out with a girl like a year or so ago, I think, and we were just, you know, doing like daty chit-chat kind of thing, and she was like, "So, do you have like a favorite like album?" And when people usually ask that, one of my responses is usually A Night at the Opera. Yeah. Um and she was like, "Ugh." And I was like, "Why? You don't like Queen?" And she goes, no. She goes, no, that's what just people say to, like, sound cool. I was like, no, that's an amazing album because it's a complete, cohesive mm-hmm. piece. And it just, like, it's so many different musical styles together. And, uh... Oh, oh. Wait, I should be able to play that since I'm so good now. <laughs> Such a great... <laughs> you grab um the uh yeah and the prophet song is just masterful <laughs> If you, um... I dream <laughs> on a moonlit stand. <laughs> um, if you own the Morning Starlet album uh, by Richie Castellano, um, uh, there is a sort of nod to the Prophet song uh, in there. Is it... What's the... Um, it's called Oblivion. Oblivion, thank you. Yeah, we did the... Uh, in Prophet song, Freddie does this uh, technique where he sings uh, a note and then he harmonizes the line with himself in like a cascading sort of harmony. So if he does a scale going down while he's on that note, that he'll play, that note will ring again and he'll be harmonizing himself and does that three times, sort of almost like the way Bach would do it. Uh, and we use that same technique, but to write something different. But right, we yeah, use yeah, his, it's uh, different, but it's We just... use his, his trick. And also uh, Brian May does that. That's, I think that's Brian May's trick. Is it? Because yeah, Brian May does that... Live with like the Brighton Rock solo, right? Um, and do I have that here? Let's see. So watch. See how it's? I'm only playing. Right. But if I play it with a delay on, it harmonizes with itself. Or uh, it doesn't work that way. But anyway, it's <laughs> uh, that's that's the idea. And uh, and I know we mentioned it before too, but like if you do go see the film, which you should, but if you do go see it, try and see it in a theater that has like Dolby, like set what is it, Atmos or some, Atmos. someone? Or, go to an Atmos theater or uh, IMAX or theater. an IMAX theater because yeah. the the panning and everything is like a big part of it, and it's like it was. What did you, I, it, I felt like I was at Live Aid. Yeah, <laughs> that's how good it was. <laughs> and uh, and like when it was right up in in um, Brian May's like you know grill, like you heard him. Oh the oh yeah oh thank you so much for bringing that up. The mixing, the audio mixing on this movie is exquisite. Like, they, they could have easily, which is what I would have done, just, like, made a good sound mix, made a good, you know, song mix, right. let that play. But no, like, when the camera's right on Roger Taylor, you hear his voice acoustically going over 
the the mix. It's right. like when you, you hear like the guitars louder, everything it's in front of gets a little goosed up. It, the mix is and in surround sound with the big speakers, it was awesome. It was so cool. I want to go see it again, to be honest. I, yeah, I would totally see it again. Yeah. I would. I'd be interested to hear how the, how it is in in IMAX, though. I don't think I could take the prosthetic like <laughs> forty feet uh, high. Um, what, uh, what did you think, um, because we mentioned him earlier, what did you think about the mix of, like, Mark Martell's voice? Because, spoiler... I don't know we're allowed to talk about that. He announced it. He did? Yeah. Okay. He announced it on his own social media channels. That, uh, um, so Mark Martell that we were talking about earlier... Who Andy Escalise plays with. Uh, in the, uh, Queen Celebration? Yeah, Ultimate Queen Celebration. The Ultimate Queen Celebration, which I saw, um, recently... <clears throat> um, he they 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 call they've said Mark is like Freddy incarnate. Um, he says he blames it on genetics, like yeah. his his just vocal his just his his vocal setup here and his breathing setup <clears throat> here just it mimics it and he sort of turns it on. Um, but it, you can follow him on YouTube and there's a lot of uh, uh, how to videos and a lot of cover videos. Uh, <laughs> I like the joke where uh, if you Google Mark Martell Celine Dion and he yeah. sings Somebody to Love. I just want somebody who looks at me the way that Celine Dion looks at Mark Martell. That's yeah. that's what I'm looking for. So all this stuff, I, I can only assume, all this stuff where he's like, you know, singing something to the band in the studio. Yeah. Um, that's him. That's probably Mark Martell, I'm there was, guessing. There were, I mean, no, there was definitely also too like the, the And he's club. credited in the movie? Yeah, I saw his name in the credits. You sure? Yep, it said, okay, it, it said additional vocals, Mark Martell. Um, and again, he, he announced it on his social media channel that he said... Um, he was proud to announce that he was going to be part of the Bohemian Rhapsody movie, that Freddie's voice was going to be uh, sort of an amalgam of actual Freddie recording, Rami Malek singing, and, and Mark singing. Right. Um, which it was, because certain parts were, you know, for certain uh, voices. But um, what, did you, what did you think of, like, that, it didn't, to me it didn't seem like it was... In like 1960s and 70s musicals, you could see people were like lip syncing, and now you really don't. No, oh the 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 miming, the mm. lip syncing was was flawless. Yeah, I really felt like everybody was singing. It, it it was just, I think there was so much craft in this and so much care taken at every turn that that just just like that just put it over the top for me. You know, it, I'm 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 really satisfied about this as a true fan of this band i am very satisfied with the movie we got that's yeah. and i'm going to leave it at that i uh give, let's uh let's give a, a a favorite part and then maybe like a, a part you were like eh, all right i'm going to be um my favorite part i i okay i have two favorite parts i'm, I'm going to go with the favorite part everybody has the live aid concert at the end is just so spectacular yeah. the way it was like cuz we've all seen that concert but to be put in it like that is something else. Yeah, and the the sweeping camera like oh, over the crowds oh. and going in and out. Oh man, there's already comparison videos too. Like I know he did it almost like identically to Freddie. Right. But there's already side by side comparison videos of the actual Live Aid concert and Rami Malek like doing all the you know like oh, I don't know you know like that all yeah. that stuff. Um, I think my favorite part of the movie was probably when they're in the farm recording at the opera, and and he goes. And they're talking about, I'm in love with my car. And he goes, well, look who's talking. You think I'm sweet like I'm some kind of cheese? Yeah. Which is like always sort of like a cringe lyric on that album, Sweet Lady. Mm-hmm. Right? And uh, I'm like, holy crap, they're talking about Sweet Lady in this movie? And they're fighting over it? And then that the fact that it's like a callback and it keeps coming back to yeah. that, I I love that. Um, I don't know if I really had a least favorite part of the movie. Um, I Okay, the, the thing that kind of bothered me, like musically speaking, the like, oh, like yeah. higher. I'm like, why? He's in key. So it's like, it's like it, you know, I'm like. So I don't. I I felt like that might have been like. And my sister warned me. She goes, "Turn your musician brain off when you see this movie." And I didn't really think I had to too much. That was one little area where it was just like, um, it's like maybe that's not the the right word to use, but they kind of that was like a dumbed down. Uh, explanation of how hard it was to record that song sure so what about you um i definitely liked that i that that entire sequence i feel like set the tone for me for the movie mm-hmm. because it showed them being creative it showed it that that they were doing 
So they're basically doing something different, but then there was enough in there was enough in there for the really hardcore fans. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, if you want to use Star Wars references without putting Han Solo, you know, and Chewbacca back in the movie, it was just like you know, like the uh, the cheese line and just like little things here and there. Um, uh, I was kind of bummed it didn't really have a place for it, um, but I was kind of bummed that they didn't mention even one bit um about the highlander and and flash gordon soundtrack well they ended with show must go on no no that's from Hi- no that's uh no they did who want they did who wants who to wants live, live forever, forever that's the one in yeah. the middle um uh if i had one little nitpick i feel like there was just too many times where freddie was just looking in the mirror at himself and like it was just slow and you're like what oh why is he staring at himself again um like yeah it again small nitpick um I mean the, the the stuff with with Mary the, like broke my heart like yeah. every single time. I you know what you know, part made me cut. It was almost cringe, but I realized I guess this is the band that could do it when they're in the truck outside of their first gig after the the singer leaves and Freddie starts singing their song and they just jump with three bar harmony. Oh, yeah, I yeah, went yeah. right to Afternoon Delight at that point. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean or or, or um, Step Brothers where, where they're uh, singing Sweet Child of Mine in the right. car with the yep. family. Mm-hmm. But I'm like. It's Queen. Of course they could do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, the, it's, the, it's the vocal band. Right. It's the number one rock vocal band ever. It's like, I guess the Beach Boys and Queen maybe. That's it. Right. And uh, that... And, and Crosby fills in there. She'll the three. And, that, uh, and that's like one of those little things we were talking about earlier. Like those little nitpicky things where like the songs are released out of order or whatever. Um, like it was just like, oh, this is their first gig, you know, and and they're singing, but like they rehearsed for like months before they. That was the rumor. I don't know if that's true or not, but. But uh, but yeah, again, little nitpicky, just like a, a couple of the slow parts. I was like, all right, you know, you can pick up the pace a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, the. Uh, yeah, but I mean, otherwise, yeah, the the like I said, the music hit the right notes for me. Um, no pun intended. Um. But yeah, just the, the stuff with the Mary and uh, all, all the stuff with Mary and all the stuff about him just being lonely mm-hmm. just really like struck a, like, you know. Yeah, the stuff with the window and the lamp. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. And it's just like, you know, it's, it's, it, you'll hear a lot of music, you'll hear a lot of musicians and a lot of the celebrities say this is like, uh, you know, a lot of people, because the reason that they get mixed up with drugs and alcohol and all that kind of stuff is because they're constantly surrounded by people, but they're actually. Like, because you're in the spotlight, like, you don't have a... But you're actually alone. Yes, exactly. I mean, it sounds like it's a trope, but it's, you know, you, you hear so you hear so many cautionary tales yeah. with the same, you know, so subject matter. So, in closing, let's let's uh, g- give us a, a... How do we score these? Is it 10, 5? How do we do this? Um, <laughs> how many wee wills out of a rock you? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, out of 5, I'd, I gave it a solid 4 out of 5. Same. Four, four, yeah, four to five, four and a half out of five, and I think uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Rami Malek was uh, nominated for an Oscar for this for this performance because it was quite an undertaking and he really did a good job. It's too bad that uh, Brian May wasn't the lead of this movie because uh, that guy Willem <laughs> oh, Willem Dafoe over there was really <laughs> was really good. Um, yeah, I'll probably I, I it might go up like a half a point or more when I uh, you know because I'll buy it. And I'll watch it again, and then like I'm sure there's tons of deleted stuff too, which I'll be like, oh man, like it's you know maybe even some of the goofier stuff or even some of the sadder stuff. They were like, I don't know. But yeah, yep. Because that 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 does sometimes when I buy when when I buy a flick uh, for home viewing, like sometimes that changes my perception of it because you see like how much fun somebody they had like making the movie. Or... Oh, I can't wait to see the special features on this movie. Yeah, you I know can't what I mean? Like, it's, I, I, I hope. I hope there's like a robust set of special features, unlike uh, some of the recent movies that we've reviewed. But uh, I'm really hoping. I'm looking forward to that. So I think that's it. Uh, Anything else to add? No. Go see Bohemian Rhapsody. Yes, it's excellent. Um, Google uh, Mark Martell. Google Bohemian Rhapsody. Richard Castellano. Um, and uh, yeah. Thank you for watching. This is Jarrett Pressman. I'm Richie Castellano, and uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah. <laughs>